Section 5.3, combining functions. In this section, we are going to look at combining functions arithmetically, opposing functions and decomposing functions. Combining functions arithmetically, let f of x and g of x be two functions. Number one, function f plus g of the x is the function f plus function g at the x value f minus g of x is the function f minus the function g of x value. f times g of x is the function f of x times the function g of x value. And the last one, f over g of the x is the function f divided by the function g value at x. Provided that the g of x cannot be zero, otherwise it's going to be undefined. The domain of each of those new functions consists of the common elements or the intersection of elements of the domains of f and g individually with the added conditions that the quotient function, we have to omit those elements for which the gx equals zero. Examples. Number one, given the two functions f of x, equals x to the third plus four, g of x equals square root of x. We're gonna find the sum of the f and g at x and its domain. And in part b, we are going to find the f over g of x and its domain. For the first part, since the function f is x to the third plus four, which is a polynomial function, we're gonna make a list. The domain of the function f is the set of all real numbers because no restriction for the polynomial function. Where the function g is the square root of x, the index of the root is an even number. That means the restriction is the x or the radicand must be greater than or equal to zero, otherwise we will not get the result as a real number. Then we can list, it, list the domain of the function g as the positive value of the x, including zero. So starting from zero all the way to infinity. So this is the square bracket. That means we include the point zero. Now, when we combine the two functions, the function f plus g of the x is the same as the function x, f plus the function g, where the function f is x to the third plus four. The function g is square root x, combine them to be x to the third plus four plus square root x. And since there are no like terms, so this is the sum of those two functions. Next, we're going to look at the domain of the f plus g. With the concept of the domain of the sum of the function, going to be the common part of the domain for both of them. If we use a real number line to help us determine the common part for the domain of the function g, going to be the set of all real numbers. That means we're going to use the entire real number. If this is 0. This is the domain of the function f where the function g, the domain is the non-negative number or starting from zero, including zero to the right-hand side. So this is the domain of the g. So the common domain would be the overlapping one or starting from zero to positive infinity. So we give the answer for this one as a domain of f plus g equals the set of x where x is greater than or equal to zero, or in this interval form. In part B, f over g of x, which is the same as f of x divided by g of x, given that the gx cannot be zero because we are doing the division of the quotient form, f of x is x to the third plus four divided by the g, which is square root x, Given gx not equal to zero, that means square root x cannot be zero. Therefore, x cannot be zero. This is the restriction for this quotient. Now for the domain, 
of f divided by g is going to be the common domain, which is the domain of the f intersection with the domain of the g, would be found from the previous problem, which is zero, infinity, including zero. But with the exception that x cannot be zero, we have to omit the point zero. That gives us the domain of the f over g is going to be the set of the x where f is greater than zero or not including zero or positive number.